Hi YouTube, it's Alan Sugano. I'm the president of ADS Consulting Group and today's topic is about certification authority uh, servers. So as you may know in Windows, you can set up what's called the Windows CA or Certification Authority or Certificate of Authority. It's basically a way where uh, if you're joined to Active Directory, you can push out certificates and if they're a member of Active Directory, they get trusted automatically. You can use them for um, S secure FTP, you can use them for uh, SLDAP, um, you know, or if you need to, you can use them for wireless. There's many, many uses for the reason why you would stand, um, want to stand up a CA. So uh, a couple of things. One is, of course, you always want to stand up the root CA as a standalone CA because you'll need at least two servers to do this. So one is a root CA, make it a standalone CA, which is not joined to Active Directory because best practices are you stand up the CA, the root CA, issue, uh, create a subordinate CA, and then shut down the root to keep it offline, which is best practice because if the root CA ever gets compromised with a private key, your entire CA infrastructure is at risk. Okay, so that's first thing. Then what you're supposed to do is then you would set up an enterprise subordinate CA, which is joined to Active Directory, and then that would actually be the server that's issuing the certificates. Um, the reason why you want to set up, uh, by the way, a standalone root CA is that if you make it an enterprise CA and you shut it down for, I think it's more than 180 days, that server account will get tombstone in Active Directory and you will be very sad because you're going to have to rebuild your entire CA and rip it out manually with ads, with, uh, ad C it's ad C edit. It's not pretty. I mean, we've had to do it and it's different levels of not fun. So the other thing is if you've had a CA that, um, has been around for a while, like maybe it's running 2008 or even 2012, which is going to go end of life here, uh, relatively soon, you may want to think about upgrading. You want to upgrade to windows server 2019 or 20, uh, 20, uh, windows server 2022. Um, then, there is a there is an upgrade path, so that's a good thing. You have to do it in a very specific manner. Um, basically, the high level steps are you back up the old CA, uh, you uninstall the CA service from uh, the old server, you install the new CA services, um, you configure the uh, Active Directory uh, certificate services with a server manager, make sure the root is standalone, make, uh, make sure the subordinate is uh, an enterprise, and then you reassociate, um, you do a restore from the old server to the new server that, by the way, the new server has to have the same name. And um, then you reissue the certificates. So uh, it's kind of a complicated process. There, there's some, there are some tech notes. We still, even with the guidance, we still run into some issues uh, reissuing the, uh, upgrading the CA. So if you, if you have an existing CA infrastructure and you need to forklift it to a supported version of Windows Server, uh, certainly send us an email at info at adscon.com. We, we can certainly help you out in that, in that area. So uh, anyway, that's our tip of the week. If you like this content, please boink, hit the subscribe button, boink, hit the like button. It does help out the channel. Thanks a lot for listening. Stay safe out there and we'll talk to you soon.